Welcome and peace of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us celebrate the giving of the gift of the Holy Spirit to all baptized Catholics and Christians. We share the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit that makes us amazing disciples of Christ. Our Novena Reflection helps us to understand that Pentecost is a daily event if we are open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And anointed by the Spirit of God, we sing, inviting the Holy Spirit into our lives as we sing. Spirit of God in the clear running waters, blowing to greatness the trees on the hill. Spirit of God in the finger of morning, fill the earth, bring it to birth and glow. Where you Peace and joy be with all of you and welcome once again to our Creative Novena Devotions brought to you from this beautiful church of St. Alphonsus, otherwise known as Novena Church. Let's begin with joy in the month of Mary. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, we are truly grateful to God for the abundant blessings we have received from Him to the prayers of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Let us once more ask you to pray with us and for us. Let's begin with global intentions because we have a global praying community. Here are your intentions for the week. No country is immune to terrorism. Terrorism Day is celebrated every year on May the 21st in India. This day is to commemorate the death anniversary of former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi by a suicide bomber. Anti-Terrorism Day is to spread awareness, to bring unity among people. It is to prevent violence caused by terrorists, 
and people because of caste, religion, property, and greed for power and control. Terrorist acts can cause ripple effects through the economy that have negative impacts. Let us spread global harmony and educate young minds so that they do not get misled or follow cult practices. Today, we pay tribute and show our gratitude to the soldiers who have died in terrorist attacks in protecting the country against terrorism. We pray for the safety of all citizens that face radicalism, fundamentalism and the threats from terrorist groups and regimes that rob the people of their rights and dignity. For this we pray. Be with us, O loving Mother. May the 16th was Teachers' Day in Malaysia. We honour the dedicated men and women who taught us, inspired us and helped us attain higher goals in life. Teachers truly are the backbone of society. They have been role models to children for generations. Because of teachers, countries are able to further develop socially and economically. Come to think of it, our teachers were our external parents, counsellors, mentors, role models and friend. Jesus himself was a great teacher because he loved people. And to know him is to love him. Jesus taught us how to love both neighbour and our enemy. He taught us to forgive, pray and have faith. We lift up the most important teachers in our lives and they are our parents. May God bless them and reward them for the roles they have played in our lives and in the church. In gratitude, we pray. Be with us, O loving Mother. Our Novena devotion is not complete if we do not celebrate the great feast of the Church, Pentecost. Pentecost is a significant Christian holiday that is celebrated on the seventh Sunday or the 50th day after Easter. This day marks the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the Apostles and other followers of Jesus Christ. Pentecost is the time of renewal and reflection on the power of the Holy Spirit and its indispensable role in the spiritual life of the Church. The Church will not be what it is today if not for Pentecost, as it marked the beginning of the Christian Church's mission to the world. Like Mary, let us pray for guidance from the Holy Spirit and reflect on how we can share the message of Jesus Christ with others with the help of God's Spirit. It is also a wonderful time to celebrate the diversity of cultures and languages within the Church, as Pentecost marks the moment when the Apostles began speaking in different tongues. We come in thanksgiving to God for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that gives us power, love and self-discipline. May we cherish and use the gifts and fruits of the Spirit to enrich the Church, our communities and our families. For this we pray. Be with us, O loving Mother. Let us include the Holy Father's intention in our devotion once again, as he calls upon us to pray that ecclesial movements and groups might daily rediscover their evangelizing mission. Pope Francis considers ecclesial movements and groups as gifts and a treasure in the Church. These movements renew the Church with their capacity for dialogue at the service of her evangelizing mission. Pope Francis encourages them to always be on the move, responding to the impulse of the Holy Spirit to the challenges in today's world, 
while remaining in harmony with the Church, since harmony is the gift of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit continue to inspire and enkindle in them the fire of evangelical mission and proclamation. For this we pray. Be with us, O loving Mother. Together we turn to the loving Father and pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let me now share with you the many letters that have come to our website, but we have time just for these intentions, and we pray for the people who have written in. Here they are. Mother of Perpetual Help, thank you for all your blessings showered on me, my sons and my family. Dear Mother Mary, I thank you for your intercession for my daughter. She struggled with her studies and prayed to you that she would do well. Her results showed your intercession and support as she did very well beyond her expectations. Thank you, dearest Mother. Dear Mother Mary, I thank you for my father who just passed away. He was a simple and devoted man to the family. He provided for all of us, although struggling to make ends meet. He taught us good moral principle, and to lead a simple life. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, I thank you for our health giver. Although her job is very demanding, she is such a cheerful giver. It is tough when you have to get up at any time during the night to attend to your sick patient and sometimes get very little sleep. I ask the Lord to bless her for her dedication and service from your loving son. And now for the letters of petition. My Lord Jesus, please remove all the bad habits from my daughter. Help her to overcome the personal problems that she is facing from your loving daughter. Dear Mary, please ask our Lord Jesus to continue to provide me with all my needs and protect me. Thank you, Jesus and Mother Mary. Dearest Mother Mary, please continue to hold my hands and never let me go astray. Help me to grow in faith and never lose hope. Thank you. Amen. Dear Mother, I put my family under your protection. Look after us from all harm, danger, disease, misfortune, natural disasters and evil. Thank you for all your blessings and love. Dearest Mother, please intercede for my husband that his business may prosper. Also bless him with good health. Thank you for blessing me with a wonderful man and good husband and a father. Thank you, Mother. Dear Mother Mary, I pray for Malaysia as racial tension continues to be stirred up by political leaders for political gain. They have succeeded in dividing the nation using race and religion. Please intercede and help us live in harmony with people of different faith without prejudice and hatred for one another. With all these letters, we turn to the loving Father and pray the prayer of confidence together. Mother of Perpetual Help, we come to you and place our trust in you. You are a mother of mercy. You are called by all the refuge and the hope of sinners. Be then our refuge and our hope. Help us for the love of Jesus Christ. 
Stretch out your hand to us poor sinners. We bless and thank God for giving us this confidence in you. In the past, we have so often sinned, but with your help, we can conquer. And you will help us if we pray to you. In all our temptations, may we always turn to you and say, Mary, help me. Let me never lose my God. Amen. Let us share with Mary a prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary, you are the mother of Christ. And you are our mother also. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you with all our heart for giving us Mary to be our mother. She is so loving, so thoughtful, so understanding, and so kind. We thank you for her. Amen. the fruit of
Birthdays, anniversaries and jubilees are joyful moments for most of us. And it can become more joyful when we get the unexpected gift. And the church got the most unexpected gift on her first birthday. We call it Pentecost, when God bestowed on the church gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. I consider it the best birthday of the church because there were gifts in great abundance. And it never stopped pouring. Gifts you can never buy. Gifts with no expiry dates. The church called these blessings fruits and gifts of the Holy Spirit. It all happened in one routine prayerful night that turned out to be so spectacular. The disciples were gathered to share fellowship as usual. It was a tense night because they were wrapped in fear. Fear of being dragged off, maybe arrested, persecuted, and maybe crucified like their leader. And as long as there were talk and rumours that the Romans would spare no one, the disciples had no choice but to hide behind closed doors. There was nothing much to celebrate. And the conversation would have been around the pain of the absence of Jesus. Mary may have consoled them that God would have a plan. If Jesus was resurrected and ascended, there must be something else that God was planning for all of them. But no one could understand because the Spirit had not yet been given. So I guess they were also in a state of confusion and anxiety. And the question on their lips was, Who is this Advocate? How can the Advocate be greater than Jesus? How is the Advocate going to teach us? Will it take another three years? Will the Advocate speak in parables and give us a revision of the Law of Moses? A night of countless questions for the followers of Jesus. When they thought that God had finally abandoned them and made promises that none of them could understand. My dear brothers and sisters, Pentecost happened more than 2,000 years ago and that is a fact and when it is said that history repeats itself that is so true because Pentecost happens every day I witnessed it on so many occasions for example at Easter even last week and just this morning let me explain by just starting with the fruits of the Spirit I just finished a parish mission at the Basilica of St. Anne's. I met a mother who had lost two of her children during the pandemic. I've always said that parents should not witness the death of their children. Only the Holy Spirit can help anyone going through such a pain and tormenting experience. I had no idea at first when I met her that she had lost two of her adult children because she was full of joy, love and peace. How was this possible, I asked, if not by the power of the Holy Spirit, that she was full of peace and joy and love. She had rad radiated the most amazing aura. And this is the gift of Pentecost for all of us. We cannot overcome or resolve all our problems, and it can be very disheartening when God does not answer our prayers, even if we have to pray day and night. Remember, Jesus said, Ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit from the Father, and He will not refuse anyone who asks for the Holy Spirit. He said that He will send the Advocate, the Advocate that will help us, when we lose our minds and our hearts, when the unexpected happens. The Spirit will also help us with the gift of faithfulness when we find that the vows or promises we have made becomes a challenge. 
Maybe we have forgotten to ask for faithfulness when we were tempted in one way or another. Did you include this in your prayers? Lord, grant me love because I cannot tolerate my spouse anymore. Or, Lord, help me with my neighbours and friends who have betrayed me. Or maybe ask for peace because something horrendous happened and you cannot sleep or work but worry all day. A prayer of forbearance is good whenever we are planning revenge or an act of unkindness and hurt because someone deserves to be taught a lesson. Maybe asking the advocate the need for self-control so that we won't go on a binge, a shopping spree, restraining from lashing our tongues to belittle someone. Yes, the gift of Pentecost was not just a phenomena 2,000 years ago of the descent of the Holy Spirit on the disciples because it happens every day if we want that descent on us. The fruits and gifts of the Spirit are free of charge. It comes with great love from God. Did you realize that the descent of the Holy Spirit has already happened in you the moment you were baptized? How else did you think you could love and forgive in the most amazing way if it was not through the dwelling of the Holy Spirit in you? Yes, we have what it takes to live life to the fullest because we possess the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit to help us. Go and touch everything in your life with the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit and see the difference. It was never meant to be kept to ourselves but to be used. And that is our mission in life. We are missionaries and evangelists when we live out the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit that we have received. Happy Pentecost! You are all so blessed. Together in one faith, we turn to the Blessed Mother and pray the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, and sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, my Mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you bore our sufferings and carried our sorrows. Hear our prayers for the sick. Help them to unite themselves with your sufferings. And if it is your will, may they get better. Let them never forget that you care for them. Amen. Mary from thy sacred image With those eyes so sadly sweet Mother of perpetual succor See us kneeling at thy feet Child thou bearest, source of all thy joy and woe. What thy bliss, how deep thy sorrow. Mother, thou alone canst know. Now in adoration for Sacrament 
given them bread from heaven. Let us pray, O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You live and reign forever and ever.
we've now come to the end of this beautiful novena. We ask you to give us a thumbs up and to continue to pray with us. We'll be back next week with another wonderful novena. For all those following us, thank you for your faithfulness, your support, and to our benefactors. God bless you. See you next week. Spirit and in truth, I worship you. 